Calculating Conditional Relative Frequencies, Lesson 15.2D. In video 15.2C, the last video, we learned how to find a joint relative frequency and a marginal relative frequency. One other type of relative frequency that we can obtain from a two-way frequency table is a conditional relative frequency. A conditional relative frequency is found by dividing a frequency, such as one of these six here, by the row total or the column total. So here's a quick recap so that we can move forward in this lesson. For finding the joint relative frequency, we take the frequency and we divide it by the grand total. That's this box down here. It's the total of the columns and the rows. To find the marginal relative frequency, we divide the row total by the grand total, or we divide the column total by the grand total. Notice that both the joint relative frequency and the marginal relative frequency involve the grand total. So for finding the conditional relative frequency, so let's say we want the conditional relative frequency that a student prefers blue given that they are 7th grade. So we have blue first, then 7th grade. We're going to divide the 12 by the 23. We're going to get approximately 521 thousandths, which is about approximately 51 and 1 tenth percent. We divide 12 by the 23 and we just keep adding zeros to the right of this decimal point. And remember, the decimal point goes straight up. We just keep adding zeros as long as we have to. But you don't want to divide too much. We can just use an approximation symbol. Now, notice that it said a student prefers blue, given that they're seventh grade. We can flip it around and say the conditional relative frequency that a student is a seventh grader. So now seventh grade's first. Given that they prefer blue, now we're going to do 12 divided by 30. Now that the blue is the second one, the, the given that, we're going to go straight down from blue. And we're going to do 12 divided by 30, which, when we divide, we get 4 tenths or 40 hundredths, which is equal to 40%. So just notice that the total for the given is the denominator. So it says given that they're seventh graders, well, then coming off a of seventh grader, that total for all the seventh graders is going to be the denominator. When it said that they prefer blue, then we come down blue, and that 30 is going to be our denominator. Now, actually, here's another way, and I find this way less confusing, easier to understand. For finding the conditional relative frequency, we can find it, that conditional relative frequency, by dividing the joint relative frequency, that decimal number, by the marginal relative frequency. So if a student prefers blue, given that they're seventh graders, we're going to do 0.24 divided by the 0.46, which comes out to about 51 and 1 tenth percent. Same answer as before. And if a student is a seventh grader, given they prefer blue, we're going to do the 0.24 divided by 0.60, which, just like before, we get 40%. I think this way is a little easier I teach this way in high school geometry, but if you find the other way easier, it doesn't matter. Whichever is going to get you the correct answer. It's kind of nice to know how to do both ways, though. When we calculate a conditional relative frequency from a frequency table, we can divide by the row total or the column total, but not the grand total. Why? Well, the given in a conditional relative frequency limits it to a single row or column of a two-way frequency table. The conditional relative frequency is the part of the data in just that row or just that column that meets a certain standard, a certain criteria. So 
we don't use the grand total, but we did use it when we found the joint relative frequency and the marginal relative frequency, didn't we? Oh, now be careful when dividing decimals. To make decimal division simpler, we can clear the decimals first. We multiply the numerator and denominator by the same power of 10. If this was just 0 0.2, well, we could just multiply it by 10 because we need to only move it one hop. But since we've got two place values here as 24 hundredths, we need to multiply it by 100 to get rid of that decimal. So that means 0 0.24 times 100 would bring us to a 24, which is a lot easier to divide. And we would do the same thing for the 60 hundredths. This is in the hundredths place, so we're going to multiply it by 100. If it was just the tenths place, we would do tenths. If it's the thousands place, then it would be by thousand. The conditional relative frequency is 0 0.4 or 4 tenths or 40 hundredths or 40 percent. We don't have to divide decimals now. We can just do it as whole numbers for the dividend and the divisor because we multiplied them by 100 to move the decimal point back here. So yes, it does still have a decimal point in it, but the dividend and divisor didn't start out with a decimal in it, and that makes it a little bit simpler and may help you be more accurate. Now, I've mentioned this before in another lesson. If you want more lessons involving two-way tables and relative frequency and marginal frequency and conditional relative frequency, I'm going to have links in this video's description for my high school geometry videos from 13.4, I believe it's 13.4 A and B that talk about this, and maybe you'll be able to understand high school geometry lessons. You can also take a look at it if you're just curious what a high school geometry lesson would look like. We're finished with 15.2 D, and we're moving on to the very last lesson of 8th grade math. And we're going to be finding possible association conditional relative frequency. Remember to be precise and be careful with your calculations, and join me for the very last lesson of 8th grade math. Bye.